Now, water remediation can be divided into two very broad categories. The first category is drying, and the second category is cleanup, demolition, sanitation. The purpose of drying is to limit the amount of demolition. Uh, the IICRC states that there are four principles to drying your structure. And number one is removal of the actual standing water. So this is normally done with huge, very powerful um, carpet cleaning machines. Number two is evaporation through air movement. After a water loss, drywall, wood framing, subfloors are typically saturated with water. This water can only be removed through evaporation. This is normally accomplished by using large industrial fans that are moving thousands of cubic feet of air per minute. Uh, the third is dehumidification. In case anyone didn't know this, Charleston's a tad bit humid. Add a bunch of water to your house, it's going to be more so. It is very difficult to evaporate water if the air in the building is already full of water. So dehumidifiers pull air out of the, pull moisture out of the air, put it in liquid state, and put it down the drain. Uh, now the, the fourth um, principle of drying, which is probably the least understood, is temperature control. Uh, all drying equipment works best at specific temperatures. If it's 100 degrees in the house, by the way, the dehumidifiers are not going to work very well. Most structures dry a little bit better between about 70 and 90 degrees. Now all these four principles work into the most common misperception of water damage. The water, th that myth is that the water that you see is the water you have to worry about. The myth says that if you can remove the standing water, the rest of the structure will air dry. It is my conservative estimation that this misperception has damaged thousands of buildings throughout Charleston and has compromised, had the deleterious effect on tens of thousands of Charleston residents. 